For analysis, we turn to Ambassador Phil Wilcox. He served as Director of Israeli Affairs and Deputy Assistant Secretary for Mideast Affairs at the U.S. State Department. He's currently President of the Foundation for Middle East Peace and joins us from Washington, D.C. Mr. Wilcox, welcome to Arise America. Thank you so much for being here with us. I do Thank appreciate you, it. So, of course, Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to make Hamas pay for uh, the, uh, the murders of these three teens. He is convinced that that Hamas is responsible for that. A Hamas spokesperson responded to that threat by saying, if occupiers carry out an escalation or a war, they will open the gates of hell on themselves. Is this bluster and rhetoric, or might this be the foretelling of an all-out conflict? Bluster and rhetoric, rhetoric is very dangerous and could uh, turn this into a real new spiral of violence, indeed. Uh, it reminds me of the beginning days of past Palestinian uprisings, uh, which lasted for several years. It's a very dangerous, volatile situation. In, indeed. In fact, the uh, foreign minister called for ground troops to be sent in. How uh, Israeli foreign minister, by the way, how likely do you think that is? I don't think they'll go into Gaza. They've been there before many times, and they have always failed. I think it's bluster. Uh, threats of force never work, uh, yet they are regularly relied upon. Uh, these are symptoms of an underlying political problem, and there will be no end of uh, violence and terror until the fundamental issue of Israel's occupation uh, of the West Bank and East Jerusalem is resolved. Um, what do you make of um, this violence against these three Israeli teens? That's what I'm referring to. Hamas has not taken responsibility. In fact, they uh, have said they weren't responsible. Of course, Israel, particularly Benjamin Netanyahu, is convinced that they are responsible. Is it possible that there is some rogue part of Hamas that was responsible for this? Yes. Uh, according to Israeli press reports, uh, these young Palestinians from the Hebron district in the southern West Bank were members of a clan that had been uh, supporters of Hamas, but not operatives of Hamas, and that they probably acted on their own. It is unlikely that within weeks of Hamas's agreement to join a Palestinian unity government, whose aim would be to resolve the conflict, would resort to uh, violence. So uh, ben Benjamin Netanyahu, of course, regards Hamas as a, an enemy, yet there's no indication that Hamas itself was responsible. And speaking of which, this unity government, of course, was much to the chagrin of, of Israel, the joining forces of Fatah and, and Hamas. Is uh, Mahmoud Abbas, is, uh, does this force him to slow that unity effort down or scuttle it altogether, if it's proven that Hamas was responsible for these deaths? Yes, I think if it is proved they were responsible, uh, it would deal a very serious blow to the unity agreement, because it was implicit in Hamas's undertaking to work for a unity government uh, that they would no longer uh, resort to violence. But as I said, it's hard to believe that Hamas uh, changed its mind so suddenly after making this major commitment to join a unity government. It does seem confounding indeed. Let's talk a little bit about the U.S. involvement in this. Of course, the president, as well as Secretary of State John Kerry, made it a part of their foreign policy agenda to try uh, to facilitate peace talks uh, between Palestine and Israel. And as we know, that stalled spectacularly. Uh, to, as far as you can tell, is there a plan B on the part of the U.S.? Or perhaps will they uh, just be resigned to the impasse? I hope they are not resigned, but I know of no plan B. The failure of the Kerry mission, and I, indeed I admire Senator Kerry for how hard he tried, uh, but others have tried in the past to get the parties themselves to reach agreement. Those efforts have always failed and they have failed again. It is time for a new approach to resolving this conflict and creating two states. And that will require much more rigorous international uh, intervention and much more uh, persuasive and persistent American leadership. 
Indeed, we'll have to leave it right there for now. Phil Wilcox, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And you're watching Arise America.